Hello students, welcome back to my session of English language. Hope you all are fine and healthy. In today's session, I'm going to tell you about non-finite verbs. Uh, this is lesson four of your grammar book. So let's understand what is finite and non-finite verb. What is the difference between the two? What are the different kinds of non-finite verb? What are their function and difference between the two kinds of non-finite verb? So let's start with this. We know that verb verbs can be broadly divided into two kinds: finite verbs and not finite non-finite verbs now what are finite verbs these verbs these are such kind of verb that changes according to tense that is time of action the number of people doing the action that is singular or plural or the person like first person second person or third person pronoun doing the action now let me explain this with the help of the example i enjoy painting i enjoyed painting rita paints a picture rita painted a picture rita will paint a picture now you can see in the above example the main verb is paint and it is changing according to the tense first is in simple present second simple past and third in simple uh, sorry future tense so you see all these verb is changing its form according to the tense that's why this is finite verb now let's see the change according to the number of people doing this like uh, like it was written pay rita paints a picture this is for one person singular and it is written paints where if i make it as a plural like rita and mina paint a picture the verb form changes to paint so you see that it again is changing according to the uh, number of the people doing the action whether it is singular or plural and next is how if we change the person the form of verb changes like for example i paint a picture you paint a picture she paints a picture now here i is first person you is second person she is third person in the above sentences the verb paint changes according to the person so you see in all these example i've taken the verb paint and you see that it is changing according to the tense according to the person doing the action and according to the number of people doing the action so all these in a, these this is known as finite verb one that changes with tense number and person now let's see another example that will explain that what are non finite verbs okay see i enjoy painting we enjoy painting you enjoy painting she enjoys painting i enjoy the painting so in all these word you see enjoy is changing so enjoy is finite verb it is changing with the change in tense like enjoyed it is changing with change in person and or the number of singular or plural so these the word enjoy in these sentences is finite verb where painting is not changing in any of these so painting here is non finite verb yes because they are not changing okay so they are non finite verb so what are non finite verb a non finite verb does not have tense it does not change its form whenever whatever be the time of action number of people doing the action or the person doing the action okay now let's move on to the next part the kinds of non finite verbs now there are three kinds of non finite verbs they are infinitives that is two plus verb next is gerund this is ing form of verb that acts like a 
noun in the sentence and third is participle this is also ng form of verb but it functions like an adjective okay so let's move on to the next part we'll start with that first one infinitive now what are infinitive an infinitive is a non-finite verb that expresses an action and it is generally preceded by the preposition to. So it is the simplest one of all these three kinds to identify. Because all these, this base form of verb is used and before that we add to. Let's see the example like I want to play. She likes to dance. This is an ideal place to party he was asked to read book here you see the verbs are to play to dance to party, party to party to read now in all these the verbs are non-finite because they're not changing with tense or number or person with the of the subject so these are non-finite verbs now there are certain sentences where these infinitives are used without being preceded by the preposition to and in such sentences such infinitives are known as zero infinitives or bare infinitives now when are they used they are used after certain verbs of perception or permission that are used after the direct as the direct object of the verb and after model auxiliary verb also to is not used with infinitive let's see the example uh, like uh, she can solve the puzzle she must learn leave now we shall accept the invitation they will accept the invitation we should write an apology letter so in all these you see that the verb Model after model auxiliary infinitives are used, but we are not. It is not preceded by the preposition to. Uh, what are the functions of infinitive? Infinitive acts as the subject of the verb or the direct object of the transitive verb or complement of a verb, verb or object of a preposition. Now let's see when it acts as the subject of the verb. For example, to err is human. To forgive divine to act is not the same thing as to react in all the, the two sentences to err and to act is the subject of the verb next example Jay loves to sleep children love to go out so to sleep and to go these are object of the transitive verb loves and love so they are infinitive as the object of the preposition you can say that i was about to leave it is about to rain so your preposition is about about what about to leave about to rain so this is object of a preposition okay so infinitives are what they are base form of verb which is preceded by to okay next coming up to the next part next kind of non-finite verb is gerund the gerund is the ing form of verb that functions as a noun remember it functions as a noun it is a verbal noun and does the work both of a verb and a noun as for example jogging is a good exercise fishing is his hobby now you see jogging and fishing these are verb but they are being used as a noun in the sentence that's why they are called gerund okay as a gerund functions as a noun it can be the subject of the verb it can be the object of the verb or preposition or complement of a verb now let's see how it functions as the subject we can see from the example hunting is prohibited swimming is easy to learn now here hunting and swimming 
both are ing form of verb but it is being used as the subject of the in the sentence so these are gerunds as the object of the verb nupur loves reading he likes jogging ing form loves what and likes what reading and jogging so these are object of transitive verbs next object of the preposition they always think of going on a long trip he should apologize for breaking the glass you can see preposition is of and for of what going and for what breaking the glass so these are object of preposition ing form and that's why they are gerunds called gerunds okay so this is about gerunds and next we will do the third kind of non finite verb that is your participles so what are participles participles are verb that is used as an adjective and often ends with ing or ed or en t n or d it is as it is used as an adjective we call it as verbal adjective because it is made from a verb but it forms it acts as an adjective now there are two types of participles okay one is present participle and other is past participle okay so what are present participle present participle again is ing form of verb and you have read that gerund is also ing form of verb but gerund acts as a noun in the sentence whereas participle acts as an adjective now participle present participle are used in two forms one is as an adjective or to form the continuous tense okay like present past or future continuous or present past or future perfect continuous tense so just to make it easy remember we uh, i've told you that there are three forms of verbs that are base form present second form past participle form sorry past form second form and third form is past participle form of verb like talk talked talked speak spoken sp sorry speak spoke spoken do did done write wrote written so these are different forms of verbs so understand this let's say that there is a fourth form of verb third form is known as past participle form of verb let's make it fourth form of verbs fourth form of verb, verb by taking base form of the verb plus adding ing to it so like making it talk talking speak speaking do doing write writing okay and this this fourth form of verb is present participle okay present participle it is just to uh, make you understand make it easy so consider that as the fourth form of verb okay now i told you that this present participle is used for as an adjective and uh, to form the continuous form so let's see the example of in few sentences when it is used as an adjective i really like this dancing doll he jumped from a moving train he sold his working machine it was an amazing film he was trapped inside the burning house many of his painting show the setting sun so in all these example you see the ing form of verb is dancing moving working amazing burning setting okay but these are being used as an adjective they are describing what kind of doll dancing doll which train what kind of train moving train which machine working machine which film amazing film so they are describing about 
the noun like doll, train, machine, film, house, sun. So these describing verbs are known as adjective that describes the noun and that's why but this is ing form so that's why it is known as present participle form. Now next is <coughs> present participle is used for making continuous tense. So let's see like take an example of the base form of verb um, talk. Okay. I am talking. Okay. I am talking. I have been talking. So this is the sentence is in present continuous and present perfect continuous. I was talking. I had been talking. I will be talking. I will have been talking. So you see the term talking, the fourth kind of verb talking is saying it is not indicating the tense tense is being indicated by the helping verbs that are used in the sentence but here this second verb main verb talking is saying it is not changing its form so that's why it is a non-finite verb it is not indicating any tense it is it is not changing with the subject so this is participle it is showing an ongoing action the time is being indicated by the helping verbs that are used in the sentence okay so these are present participle now present participle is also used to explain a reason that is, it is used to show cause and effect. Like for example, feeling hungry, he went into the kitchen and opened the fridge. What was the cause? Feeling hungry and the effect was he went into the kitchen and opened the fridge. Being poor, he didn't spend much on clothes. Knowing that his mother was coming, he cleaned the flat. What was the cause? That his mother was coming. And what was the effect? He cleaned the flat. He whispered, thinking his brother was still asleep. So, in these all these sentences, feeling, being, knowing, thinking is used as the participle present participle and these are say telling you giving you a reason and what is the effect of it okay so these are present participles now we have past participle now past participle functions are same as that of the present participle okay the functions are same but there is a difference in the structure of the sentence. In present participle, we are using ing form of verb. But in past participle, we use third form of verb. Okay. Like written, broken. Okay. So, let's see the example. For the past participle. The skilled craftsmen were present at the exhibition venue. The doctor was looking after the wounded boy. Now here skilled and wounded. These are past participles. They are verbal adjective because they act as a verb and adjective both. They are describing about the craftsman and the boy. The skilled craftsman and which boy? The wounded boy. So this past participle also is similar in the same manner as the present participle function this also functions in the same manner okay so they are also used as an adjective only in place of ing form it is the past participle form of verb is used in this okay so this was all about the three kinds of non-finite verbs and i hope you have understood this do the exercises that are given that is given in your book and apart from that i'll be giving you assignment so do those assignment in your 
copy or on a page okay uh, if you have any difficulty you can write that in the comment box or you can message me through eCare app and I hope you understood everything everything is clear to you all so that's all for this chapter see you next week till then stay safe bye